together. <laughs> well, welcome, guys. I haven't seen you in 15-ish years, which is crazy. Y'all look the same. Can you believe it? Yeah, you look the same, look too. 15 years later, time hasn't uh, done anything. Where's the time? Yeah, Bob? right? A decade and a half. Ain't got bleep on us. Hey. I've got the fountain of youth going. That's great. Yeah. It's in the water in Hawaii. Yeah. For everybody that doesn't know Rosie, she came into our video store looking for a job. We hired her at the video store and said, hey, look, we're working on this zombie movie. And for the next two years, we hung out with Rosie almost every day for two years making this zombie flick. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. And we made Rosie do all these crazy things that she never knew she was capable of. Is the acting then, uh... you? <laughs> you remember when we had you sit down in that abandoned house? And you're just kicking back, and then all of a sudden, they're I'm going like this. Watch out. <laughs> rats. Like a bunch of rats all <laughs> in underneath it. That was like an abandoned quarters house. I'm so surprised like we never got like arrested or something like we I feel like we trespassed on so many random properties. It's so crazy. We like destroyed that one house. It was already yeah. destroyed. <laughs> Rosie, we're all like, there's a scene where she just has to go through a screen door and we're like, you're gonna break to, in. You're gonna have to break in and kind of hit like a two by four to break it. You're like, I can't do that. We're like, yeah, you can just like, do it. it. Go, Rosie. Every day when it was like truth or dare, and I would always pick dare is like what it felt like. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. The underground bunker shots were so cool. Like, so crazy. How, where was that? It was like a lifetime ago for me in my head. Like, I, I remember it very vividly, like in there, but like, was it like some secret place? It seemed very secret, like some like CIA location. It's top secret, no doubt. All our locations are top secret. You guys blindfolded me on the way there or something? Like I don't remember <laughs> any of the like journey there. I just remember. Wow, you just remember on. being there on location. This yeah, amazing. We had a lot of fun making that movie. Yeah, yeah. The video store was my first job, and I actually started working there like two summers before I moved to Hawaii. And I think I was like 15 or something, like definitely not like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I lied about my age. I was definitely like <laughs> visiting like sophomore year. Did you guys have an adult section there? He sure did. And he called me up. He says, I'm 18 now. I can sell the adult films now. I'm like, yeah, yeah, go for it. <laughs> And then you're, we come in the video store and then you're passing all along the adult videos. You're like, oh, oh, God. So crazy. That was the chillest job ever. Hi, Junie. Juniper, hey. Hi. Are you the star? Are you an alien? Oh, she didn't say anything. So, documentary is awesome. I love anything UFO, anything alien, anything extraterrestrial. And your guys' channel covers all kinds of out of this world material. I have so many questions. I'm sure we don't have time to do all of them, but I'll ask most of them anyways. So go ahead and just kind of explain what the documentary is about and let me know your thoughts on the response to it. Well, first off, it's uh, super cool to be on Isle Rosie's channel. The YouTube channel has blown up over the past year. It's good to see the growth and all the fun things you've been doing. It really makes us happy to see uh, uh, do well in this YouTube platform and uh, keep doing what you're doing. Likewise, you guys. So cool. So for starters, did you expect this documentary to it's literally blown up. Like, it's kind of crazy. I'm not surprised because y'all do such great work and it's about time. Yeah, well, being the top UFO channel on the planet, it's also, it's humbling to be uh, in that genre where we have the public submitting to us their footage. People see strange things in the skies and they don't have a platform to share it. And we give them this platform and become this, the largest YouTube channel in regards to the phenomenon on the planet. So it's. It's so cool. We get this information. We've made a lot of connections through over over the years. So we said, uh, well, let's put our talents together and let's make a documentary. Let's make it something bigger than YouTube. Let's go mainstream with this and see if we could compete with the, the biggest documentaries out there. So we looked at our competition and we're like, we could do this. We could keep up with these big boys, even though they put millions and millions of dollars into their productions and hundreds of thousands of dollars into advertising. These guys right here out of Hawaii, 
this channel, Third Phase Moon, was able to produce this, get it out in record time, and you know, dethrone some of the biggest uh, players in uh, the field of documentaries. And you know, we're taking a, sometimes a third spot on iTunes, keeping up with uh, the biggest documentaries. So when we put Countdown to Disclosure, uh, we kind of figured that it was going to go, it's going to be well received. Some of the people that were able to access in this documentary and get them on camera to actually speak about it was really surprising but overall we just watched the final cut ourselves just a couple weeks ago when it premiered on amazon prime we didn't even look at our final cut and to look you at our did final it cut, no we're, we're we're just like we stepped away we were done let's render this bad boy out we're like let's get surprised when it actually comes out and kind of surprise ourselves and see it kind of like everybody else does for the first time yeah that's important that's important to do like as content creators or anyone in the creative world we're our own like worst critics and there's always always something that we would tweak or change no matter what especially as a musician and for you guys as filmmakers there's always something you're like should is that the final like should that should i change that or should i have like you'll just drive yourself crazy so at a certain point you have to realize like the audience isn't gonna know like the potential of the changes you could have made it's just about like the passion in the project and you know doing a good job and just putting it out there and not overthinking it and it definitely helps to have fresh eyes to look at it again You're right Rosie. yeah th this creativeness like you just gotta walk away and know when you're done with it and cut ties move along because you could keep fine tuning it as much as you want, but then you could overdo it. You'll drive so, yourself crazy. So, yeah. You know, we also wanted to get it out in, in a time that's relevant to what's going on right now with 180 days to a uh, countdown to disclosure by the Senate, the government's getting involved, you know, the transition of the president. What does the president know about all this yeah. stuff? AI, quantum physics, and this whole disclosure aspect. It's we're so relevant to what's going on right now. So we wanted to get it out as fast as possible. So we did a powerhouse of 10 days of editing and then wow. we're done, get it out. Let's get it ingested into all the streaming platforms as fast as possible. That's it's really 16th. well done, visually appealing, structured really well, shot really well. I really enjoyed it. I'm a documentary freak. I've always been into UFOs and I used to have a big fear of aliens when I was younger because I used to watch those really crappy shows on like, what is it, UPN, that channel UPN of like aliens like abducting people in the middle of the night and my brother would always make me watch it and scare me. He was like, you know, they do it all the time, like mostly with kids, like they come to like Chicago a lot. And I was like, I used to just like have my door cracked open all the time with the hall light on, but then I would psych myself out and see like in my imaginary kid eyes, like silhouettes of aliens and all sorts of stuff. And I personally have never seen anything extraterrestrial that I know of with my own eyes. I've never had an experience like that, but I have seen on your channel, your guys' reaction to some odd things over the ocean. So I guess my question is, when was the first time you've seen anything that resembles UFO. What was your first thought and the first time that you saw anything like that? I was talking about when we were about four to five years old, four years old, right? Yeah. We had an experience when, uh, you know, we had our bedroom, we had our separate beds, but we had to share the same room. And one night, you know, we saw these gray beans. We don't talk about it too much. I don't mean, did we ever tell you this, Rosie? We go way back, but did we ever tell you that actually we had three alien grays of, like show up in our bedroom and they're peter pattern around they had no i would on. they had these large heads and uh, i would I'm remember sure this that. please i'm not sure if you're go into detail please tell me sure after you're a little with, you know who skinny bob is rosie there's that video that's kind of infamous video that came out five years ago where you see this walking alien with a large head and it kind of moves his head. It's, we said, as soon as we saw that video, we said, this looks exactly like what like we saw for our children. We're about four to five years old. We lived in Palolo Valley on Oahu. It's this remote region up in the mountain, sacred area. We told our parents the next day, look, these guys came walking in our room. They had these big heads, these big eyes. So anyway, move on a few years later. Oh, just, we Eddie, just moving on. Thing. We don't know what happened that evening. We actually don't. So we don't know if we're abducted or not. All we know is that they seemed friendly and we weren't intimidated by it. Go ahead, about what, six years ago was it? 
Well, about six years later, then our dad told us about this UFO experience he had on the North Shore of Oahu. And we said, well, where were we? We want to see a UFO, Dad. We're about 12, 10 years, at, about nine years did old he at know the about, time. Did he know about your experience? For, like, obviously, when you were five, four or five, you, like, told your parents, like, I saw yeah, this. And, did they believe you when you told them? Uh, they, you know, twins, wild imagination. I don't know if they took us seriously again, unfortunately. You know, it's hard to prove. But our dad yeah. was always, our dad's always been a believer that we're not alone. And then he told us something about this thing that he experienced. And we said, where were we? And he says, well, you guys are sleeping. And he said, dad, next time this shit goes down, wake us up or yeah. let us yeah. know. You were, you were so 12? About, that, yeah. So about a month later, we're sleeping and he comes into our room and says, wake up, guys. We're like, what's going on? He says, they're back. We're like, oh. So he takes us out to the beachfront. We lived on the beach beachfront property on the North Shore of Oahu. He says, look at that. And we're seeing this. Uh, incredible display of UFO, meta propulsion technology, a light in the sky jumping from one place to the other, 10 miles per second, leaving trails behind it. Then it became stationary, dropped something into the ocean, then boom, boom, took off. And we're like- Oh it, the, my gosh. What time <laughs> What time of the night was this? Uh, I would say it's about maybe 11 at night, something like that. And this was back in uh, 1978. So what kind of technology was capable of producing these kind of maneuvers? There was none. So, And there's yeah. still kind of a doubt of the technology out there could actually reproduce what we saw that night. I think there is, but we don't know. We saw something and maybe it's not one of ours. And so since then, you can't help but be fascinated by, by anything extraterrestrial by, after seeing something like that. Let's say this. What, what year was it? It was on our birthday, uh, 2010. 2010. 2010. It was when we first started Third Phase Moon. We started to ask the public, hey, you guys got anything out there? Submit it to us at Third Phase. So, you know, we're the go-to guys for this. Somebody in our yeah. neighborhood gave us a call back. They said, hey, bring your cameras over. There's things that are happening over our house every day over the past week. We're like, hey, let's go check it out. That night we saw the infamous thing known as the TR-3B and what it, it's a huge triangular, black triangular craft that descended down upon us. And we, everybody, we had like five people over there. We're screaming like little girls. It was really exciting. We witnessed this thing for about them. a minute and it came over. It, one Where of our friends there had a gun and he was about to shoot at it. Cause it felt like- No, <laughs> no, like, don't do no. It. Don't do it. And we're getting pretty intimidated. At one point we're like, what's gonna happen next? Cause this thing was massive and we're all freaking out. We're like, is this real? Are we actually seeing what we're seeing? And then it seemed to like- Someone put something, something in my drink cause this is not normal to see. <laughs> so as far as what's going back to what's going on along the coast right here on the Habakua coast where we had this experience in 2010, we've always, ever since that night, we're looking all the time. And what's going on over here? They're doing military tests, an experimental aircraft, experimental meta propulsion. It's the most secluded spot to test these vehicles. And I got a feeling that's what we're uh, experiencing is definitely reverse engineered alien technology being utilized in our military's assets. But, you know, it's not only about us. It's like, that's that's nothing comparatively to what the public's giving us. The public is where all the information's at. There's a false narrative in the media where everything's a threat, it's a threat, it's a threat. And in my opinion, I don't know, after watching Countdown to Disclosure, what's your thoughts on this false threat? Do you think there's a threat? Do you, don't you think they would have done something long ago? That was part of my next question was when it comes to UFOs, do you think it's, you know, built here on our planet or built outside of our planet because obviously both exist. And what do you think is more common that people are seeing? It's a good question. The New York Times came out with a statement about nine, eight months ago or so saying that they, the military has recovered off world vehicles, not of this earth. To me, that was disclosure right there. They actually admitted it. One of the most infamous guys in the UFO world, ufology, Bob Lazar. If people don't know who Bob Lazar is, he's a guy that apparently worked at Area 51 and he was there helping out reverse engineering this flying disc that was recovered during an archaeological dig. So this thing's been around for who knows how long, hundreds of thousands of years, we don't know, but they have it in their possession. It's been recovered. So we're able to get Bob Lazar to react to the New York Times statements. And what's amazing is Bob Lazar seems to know 
how it was going to uh, roll in the future. So the next day, New York Times retracted that story and said they misrepresented what they meant. But in my opinion, how could you misrepresent dialogue and language of off-world vehicles recovered not of this earth? They don't make something like that up. That's not a misrepresentation. Yeah. They actually admitted it and they backtracked just like 1947 Roswell crash where they said it was a weather balloon. So it's the exact same thing that's happening all over again. I think uh, I think what's going on is that we're reverse engineering crap that came from another, uh, not of this earth, bottom wow. line. Yeah, a good part of the documentary where Michael Solomon kind of breaks it all down, where this technology may be being re-manufactured re, uh, and kind of a plant there in California. I don't want to name all the details, but then he breaks it down in the documentary, the technology behind the Tic Tac and where this thing may be being manufactured in a plant in California. So it's pretty incredible on the details that uh, he gives there. It's kind of like a smoking gun of what maybe this Tic Tac could be and where it's manufactured. I also saw the segment about underwater UFOs, which I guess the F in UFO doesn't really apply there, <laughs> really. Um, can you talk more about underwater unidentified swimming objects, I guess? Yeah, they're called, uh, the term they use, and every term has its own terminology. We don't know if we agree with them all, but one of them, they term it the, a USO, a USO. This Tic Tac apparently has a capability described by our Navy pilots that this Tic Tac is able to move at 30,000 miles an hour. And underneath the water, it could move 500 miles an hour. Five to six. Five to 600 miles an hour. What's the technology behind that? There's no sonic boom that happens. There's no dispersion of the water. There's some kind of, what do you call it? It's called a super cavitation. It's kind of a, a gravity field that surrounds a Tic Tac. So it doesn't really come in contact with anything in its surrounding environment. Have you ever and, seen anything with your eyes that might've been like the underwater Tic Tac? A sentence okay. I've never said before in my life. <laughs> yeah, it's wild, huh? You know, I think we get, we, we're we receiving videos from around the world that resemble exactly the Tic Tac. 100%. Wow. People are filming it. We, ha we have it on video. People have experienced it. It's there. It's pretty amazing. Wow. Do people ever submit, I'm, I'm wondering if you get this often, where people submit fake videos to you for attention or like create their own like special effects to try to, to fool you. Does that happen to you? No, we're guilty of putting up some of those videos back in the day on third phase of moon. You know, YouTube was a wild, wild west and people would submit us basically straight up CGI videos. And some of those actually slipped through the cracks on third phase of moon. But as of right now, you know, we've got a better eye doing this over the past 10 years. We know what's fake. People are always sending us a link of these old videos that are obviously CGI Then they try to give it to us thinking we're gonna take the bait, but we don't do that. And we kind of stopped doing that five, six years ago. Now it's yeah. just straight up, we're gonna make our decision. Is this something that's unidentified? There's no uh, trickery going on here. And, you definitely uh, know how to filter it out by now. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I was wondering, I was like, they must get so many people just like craving attention or wanting to trick you guys or be featured. Cause you, you are at almost a million subscribers. You're at like seven. I think we moved up to 787. And I think we got yeah. like 10,000 subscribers this past month. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below, obviously for your guys' channel. I had another question. Do you think that technology is helping us or hurting us bigger picture and why? I'm an optimist about technology, the big picture of it all. I think it's gonna help mankind. I want my Millennium Falcon. I want to have youth forever. Don't wanna grow yeah. old, move from one place to another and get back just like that. So we could go, hey, Rosie, let's go let's go get some lunch. And we'll I'm ready come back to teleport in the Tic Tac and go to text That's driving. It's gonna take like a, a couple minutes from here to California at that speed. I feel like next Instagram by like the Kardashians, they're gonna be like, yeah, we took the Tic Tac to Maui. It was so great. <laughs> exactly. You know, I think humans are smart enough. People are afraid of AI and artificial intelligence, but in the long run, I don't think it's gonna be like a Terminator. I could be wrong. Maybe it could happen in a thousand years from now, but in the short term, this AI, AI robotics, uh, will help humans in a way that we can't even uh, understand at the moment. So I'm all for technology. And I want the government 
and some of this technology that they're kind of blaming it on an adversary or somebody we don't know. See, the military is saying, we don't know what these objects are. But in reality, I think they know exactly what they are. And they're trying to make this false threat. And I want some of that technology to trickle down to us sooner than later. Yeah, the new Tesla is going to be a Tic Tac. <laughs> Brent, what do you think? Do you think technology is helping or hurting us bigger picture? Yeah, it's a good question. Dr. Greer kind of breaks it down in the documentary in its own sense, because whatever this technology is, a Tic Tac that can move at these incredible speeds, imagine using it as a projectile. So yeah. something like the size of your vehicle, going at that speed, smash it into a city, it's over. So that, that's the dangers of what could come out. But you never know. It's like, um, there's always good and bad that comes along with technology. But I think we're able to persevere uh, against that and move along. It kind of like transcends all sorts of technology that kind of comes into where we're at today from GPS, cell phones and all that. Still used in bad ways, but we're still uh, surviving here. So I think that's what yeah. it'll probably be for us. I agree. I'm a little scared of AI because that's like one of my main voices and I don't need more competition. So <laughs> I don't need a bunch of robot true, girls right? starting a YouTube channel, pranking scammers I and mocking know. me. These robots are dancing better than humans right now, but I don't think they're going to be able to uh, mimic human voice. They're not going to be able to direct and edit, direct a person behind the camera to do, uh, you know, th there's, there's a difference. It'll take a while to catch up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'll be in a thousand years from now that you were talking about for sure. <laughs> yeah, we'll be watching movies made by AI pretty oh, yeah. without, maybe a little sooner. Probably It'll be sooner. cool. Yeah. They could produce uh, movies that could be uh, beyond our expectations. Which is kind of cool too. And count out to disclosure, we had these big names like Dr. Greer, Michael Sala, Bob Lazar, but we're also able to get a comment from Michu Kaku in regards to what he thinks about technology. Also, I was gonna ask one of the gentlemen in the documentary was paid $2 billion to keep quiet. Would you keep quiet for $2 billion? You said B, right? With the billion, right? Two yeah. billion. Remind me his name? Uh, Dr. Greer. Yeah, he, he says that he was offered $2 billion to be quiet, keep his mouth shut about what he knew. Would we take $2 billion to keep our mouth shut? Hey, I'm, I'm not, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we won't take that $2 billion. <laughs> oh, never. No matter what I knew. <laughs> uh, when it comes to that point, we'll see what happens. But I'm sure uh, Third Phase of Moon will still be a, a platform to do what it needs to take to get the word out. It just recently, we're, we broke some news three and a half, four days before the major media picked up on it about the American Airlines a uh, close encounter uh, with a pilot saying that he saw a cylindrical object pass over their jet that looked like a cruise plane. So we obtained that audio from the ham operator and shared it on third phase of moon three days before the major media even picked up on it. Did we get any wow. credit for it? No, but we did call the FBI up and let them know since they're investigating it about information that we need. So we were kind of, a, I guess, I don't know, assisting the FBI on uh, their investigation. How often do you call the FBI? Quite a bit. We got a friend that works in the counterterrorism unit. He is an old classmate of ours. So we uh, oh, wow. we go, yeah, we go at it all the time about what we what we know, what we think he knows, what the government knows. So we come up with some pretty cool ideas. Do you think he's hiding Talk a lot of stuff from you? Uh, I don't know. He kind of comes to us to pick our brain on what we come up, and he's kind of like, okay, what do you guys got for me this week? And uh, he'll try to figure out on his own end, but we kind of still come to the same conclusion. Part of the government that separates itself from a private company that could create these exotic flying machines, if you'd call it that, and they don't need to tell the president. So there's no treason against the president not knowing about some of these technologies that exist. See, if we're able to build, if we're able to build this UFO or the Tic Tac, and we did it, we don't have to tell the president anything. It's ours. So right now there's a private business entity, a private corporation that has this technology, it has nothing to do with the government or military. So that's one of the reasons why they can keep it a secret for the president because he doesn't need to know. It's a me. private corporation. That scares me. <laughs> Spooky. Um, since you have content that you kind of beat the media to it. Do you get a lot of backlash? And are there certain videos that you've been 
maybe not so kindly asked to take down? Have you ever had any kind of like friction with that kind of stuff in regards to your content and the information that you put out? Oh, we've had a couple of videos that seem to be blocked for some reason worldwide. Nobody can see it. We can't even see it. We go to our YouTube channel, it's been blocked. We press play, we can't even see our own video. Was there and something it unique out, about it? It came out of Russia. So I don't know what Russia had some issues with it. <laughs> it was kind of a controversial video, but Russia didn't like it. So they, they shut it down. Yeah. We've had a <laughs> Sounds like they didn't like it. <laughs> So we uh, talked to the FBI, we, we, we asked for a little, well, we just wanted to clarify a few things that what we're doing, some of this information, because the public has actually captured Space Force secret operations at their high happening uh, 250,000 miles in the stratosphere and the public's catching it. We're putting this information out because it's coming from the public. Yeah. Is, is there anything wrong what we're doing? That's what we asked our FBI friend. Says technically, there's nothing wrong. We're not stealing it. We're getting, we're giving the information. It's shot from the public, and if they so happen to capture this stuff, and uh, you know, it was up there. That's their. That's their. That's uh. That's nothing to do with us. If we ever do get like sensitive information that could be national security, it's a sure we'll uh, we'll we'll be sensitive about how we release it. But let's but just say this: you're still gonna release it. <laughs> oh yeah. We're putting a million dollars out. If anybody could bring us an alien body, a live alien, a million dollars to anybody that can prove that they have the power of telekinesis. Juniper, come here. Juniper, Juniper, Juniper can fly. Alien? Uh, <laughs> it's not that easy. <laughs> so do you have a video out there or is that, is that like a, like a very common thing that you'll give a million dollars to anyone who brings you an alien dead or alive? We dropped, we've dropped the idea to uh, the public on Third Phase Moon. We don't put it out and say it on every episode, but you know we're looking at, we're looking for it. That's for sure. Hopefully, one of these days come. But people are still finding things in their closets. You know, recently we received uh, photographic evidence of a gentleman who was on his on a commercial airline uh, trip in the 1970s. He took a picture out his window. You know, and tucked it away into the attic. The guy died, and then his grandson came and cleaned out his attic, came along this photo, and then we received this photo. So there's this evidence, what I think, still out there. Like? I don't know, it looks like, it looks like this strange, it almost looks like a satellite outside of a commercial airliner. I like would, a satellite, it doesn't make any sense. I would faint, <laughs> something <laughs> like that. We put a video up last night on our channel, and everybody go check it out. There was a commercial airliner, and a guy's filming outside, and it looks like this cruise missile just screaming across them about maybe maybe about a mile away at the most, but it's too close for comfort. This thing's crazy. This thing was looking 1,500 miles an hour. This rocket narrowly missed the, and we, nobody ever heard about this in the world news, but people are filming this stuff. This, this video should have made world news. We should have been on ABC News with this stuff. That's wild. That is scary. I would faint if I saw something like that. <laughs> I, I, I'm not if you even there doing that triangular craft on 2000. I would have passed <laughs> away. I would have passed away. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think, I think all the blood would drain from my body and just my soul would float outside of my body. I, I would be so scared because I just if don't, I... it's just one of those things where it's almost like what came first the chicken or the egg with like military crafts and then like you know extraterrestrial out of this world crafts where it's like i don't know what's scarier actually you know like i don't I think it's scary i think it's destiny we're all gonna know in our lifetime in my opinion that we're not alone as long we're as you subscribe to, to third phase of moon we'll all, we'll all know <laughs> i do have another question yep go um, ahead which is like kind of related, kind of not, but what do you think about flat earthers? It's fascinating to me. What are your thoughts on flat earthers? No comment. Oh. No comment. <laughs> Will YouTube flag this if I say flat earther? I wouldn't even mention it. Even no. the word UFO is getting in that That's world. getting sketchy too nowadays. So now we're changing our language to like meta propulsion. Wait, so. please Jeez. say that word again because what? Mesothelioma, what were you saying? <laughs> so there's this terminology that we came up with. Instead of using UFO, which is too vague, 
and the military coming up with a UAP, unidentified aerial phenomenon. We think that's a joke too. So we're talking to our physicist that sits on the head of the Smithsonian, and he doesn't believe there's anything as a craft that could defy gravity. There's no such thing as anti-gravity because he believes there's no such thing as gravity because we're going around the sun and we stick to earth through a centrifugal force and we're all falling all at the same time as the universe expands. So when somebody says anti-gravity, he doesn't like it. And he came up with the term meta propulsion vehicle, meta propulsion vehicle and what crap or crap and meta. See, he doesn't know what the meta is, the, the energy that makes this craft appear to defy gravity. That's not what he's claiming he knows. But the question is, is that this meta, whatever it is that is making these craft fly, does it defy physics? It stays within physics. Even aliens have to be within physics. So whatever it is, it's a meta that is on the highest level. We don't know what that thing is, but it's that's the term, meta propulsion vehicle. What's the meta propulsion behind these things? My brain is like sufficiently fried right now. <laughs> that's <laughs> wild. Do y'all believe in gravity or do you think it's centrifugal? Uh -huh. It's centrifugal force. We're not, hey, we're not scientists. We don't claim to be. <laughs> wow, so. <laughs> we're just, apparently the way this guy describes it is, there's no such thing as gravity. It's just a word that they put to a thing that's making us appear that we're like, you know, connected to her. Just so like even when like the up thing with like the feather and the stone where it's like you take something light and drop it, it so like- It's in a vacuum, way. yes. It all falls out the same speed. I guess these are probably the same way, lip gloss and fake flowers. So we're all just like, like that carnival ride. Did With the wall, but we're on a that's speaker. Yep. Yep. The gravity is just kind of a word to describe the effect of being planted to the ground or that. You know, when I was a kid. When you go to space, you're just like, woo, because yeah. nothing's pulling you. <laughs> the curve <laughs> and the fall. Did Jupiter have like stronger gravity than Earth or like one of the one of the planets does? where it's like things are heavier there because the gravity is like stronger. Does that mean that that planet is just rotating faster? You know, again, we're not scientists, but I, I don't think you could even stick to anything to Jupiter because it's a gas planet. So yeah, you... but one of those planets is like heavier. <laughs> or so... Maybe. <laughs> again, also not a scientist. <laughs> Let's change the subject. Let's move along. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, for those who have not seen a countdown to disclosure, where can we take a look at this documentary? Absolutely. We're going to supply you the link so you could uh, make your choice of whatever platform you want to watch it on. It's on iTunes, Amazon Prime, Microsoft, Voodoo, Xbox, Fandango. It's even on YouTube. You could rent it on YouTube right now. Yeah. Countdown to Disclosure, the secret technology behind the Space Force. Check it out. Leave a comment too. We want to get your reviews. Let yeah. us know what you think. Yes. And where can we hype you up for that? Is is that something where we can leave a review on iTunes, Amazon, all of the above? What will help push this to more audiences? I think just doing what we're doing, talking to you, Rosie, on your incredible channel. You got a lot of subscribers. It's, you know, it's just talking to a different genre. Usually we kind of stay in the field of ufology, but to a branch out, actually you're, you're kind of our first branch out into a different you know, culture out there on YouTube. So, you know, it's just like what we're doing right now. And I, we urge people to check out the documentary. You're gonna learn a lot of things. It's gonna answer a lot of questions and you're gonna kind of walk away thinking, wow, I think I, I, I actually realize now that we do have this intense high technology from an alien race and they're using it right now. And uh, uh, it's pretty much undeniable. So, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing. We're gonna be working on the sequel here soon. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, that's a uh, big uh, player that's gonna be joining us on this one as well. And again, if you uh, haven't subscribed to Third Phase of Moon, you might wanna do that too as well because we're bringing in the latest information that comes in on a daily basis and um, the, the channel just keeps growing and you're gonna see stuff that's gonna blow your mind. Thanks, Rosie for uh, having us on this platform. Thanks for joining me on my channel. This is so fun. It was so good to see y'all after, you know, 15 years. Let's not age ourselves. It's been a while. Where can anyone reach out to you if they want that million dollars for this alien in their closet, dead or alive? 
Well, it's a good question. Every single video we post up on Third Phase of Moon, my contact email is in the description. So it's Cousins Brothers Productions at gmail.com. It's in every description. Uh, don't hesitate to share a UFO video if you have it. If you want to collect a million dollars for an alien body alive, I prefer alive. If it comes into your room and you're being abducted, don't kill it. Catch it. Hug it. Hug it. Make friends with it. So we could go over there and make friends with it. Play a game of Scrabble, Uno, whatever. Bake a cake. If you... All right. One more question. This is more of like a fun one. <laughs> Not that the other ones weren't fun, but this is more lighthearted. If you could spend one day with an alien, where would you go? What would you do? Basically, make a movie with them in a day. Obviously, I think we're fat capable of making a movie with them in a day. But that's, that's about it. And we just I, make a movie with the guy. Take me for a ride on your UFO and it get me to your planet in a day and back. Let's do it. I love it. Yeah, get that content. Make it a TikTok. Yeah. And, we're, that content. and we'll upload it that night, all right? We're not going to waste time. The world will see what we see. Live stream. They might come and get us. If this happens, there's some protocols and rules on the way we would actually put it out there to protect oh. our own safety. Please tell me, or is that sure. top secret? Is that top secret? We're not letting anybody know our protocol when we do this. Got it. Got it. But, you <laughs> but we'll let you know. We'll let you know. You can help in the disclosure. The main thing is we just got to release it to the world as fast as possible before they stop it. It'll be too late. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I'm honored to interview y'all today. And I've been a fan of both of you and your channel and all of your productions for so long. And this is my first interview with fellow YouTubers. I think I might start doing it more often. And I'm so glad that y'all had time to talk about your documentary. Anyone who hasn't seen it, the link's in the description below to check it out. And don't forget to share with people, leave reviews, tell your friends, tell your mom, tell your alien friend. And if you see an alien, don't kill it. Put it in your closet and get your million dollars. <laughs> That's right.